In this video I'm going to be showing how to test the instrument cluster temperature gauge and fuel gauge without having to remove the instrument cluster. The technical manual does show when you want to test the temperature sensor the sensor is on the housing where the uh, thermostat is located. This is on the right side and it's going to have an orange white wire connecting to it. Okay, when you go back to the instrument cluster this should be a direct connection to the instrument cluster and that's going to be going to pin 2 on the 25 pin connector. Okay, so what I'll be doing is I'm going to take this lead going to the instrument cluster and ground it. When you ground it, it should cause the instrument cluster to operate. Okay, the temperature gauge on the tractor is showing that it's a little warm, which I had the tractor running, and ignition is off. I've grounded the orange-white lead, and when I turn the ignition on, it's going to peg and go all the way to hot. If you have a short anywhere on this orange-white wire, it's going to be doing the same thing. I've had two tractors, and this is a one-in-a-million thing that can happen. I've had two tractors where the orange-white wire was rubbing on the valve cover or on another tractor. It had been uh, strapped over to one of the brackets. The wire is in that corrugated tube but when somebody put a zip tie on they crushed it against there and that's where there was a short. So it's a one in a million that that would have happened. I had it happen to me twice. So that's something that if your uh, gauge is going to be you know sh you know pegging out you know what's happening is it's being shorted or there's something wrong with the instrument cluster but this is something I definitely would want to look at. Uh, if you're having a problem, just take, and, uh, take your finger and slide over the wire and take it out of the loom and follow it back to the instrument cluster just to make sure. On the left hand side of the thermostat housing, on the opposite side of the temperature sensor, you're going to see there's another, some type of sensor here, and this is for temperature. This is the thermostat housing here. So this is a device that's going to be used for checking temperature. This actually is an over temperature switch. On this tractor if the temperature gets over 232 degrees this is going to operate which will then shut off your uh, PTO. People have problems with their PTO and can't figure out what it is. Well if this is operating the engine is overheating it's going to shut this off so that you're not going to damage the engine. I did have this on one of my tractors go bad and cause problems. Eventually I figured it out you know, and came back and changed this. But that's something, uh, the only time this would be in the circuit is when you got over 232 degrees. This is a diesel tractor. This has the Anmar three-cylinder engine in it. I was working on that uh, X485 and built into there I start reading in the technical manual, there also is a circuit there that is going to shut the engine down if the temperature gets over, it was like 230 degrees also. So that's something if you're having problems, hot tractor and it dies and it won't start and you let it cool down, it might be just this switch on you know different types of tractors that have them. The Anmar engine uh, is the one I'm most familiar and I was a little surprised when I saw that on an X485 which is the uh, fuel injected 25 horse Kawasaki engine. When I say that you need to ground that orange white uh, connector that's going back to the instrument cluster I always like to have a jumper and run a jumper back to the battery ground and not just try to touch it to something on the engine. On these tractors there is a ground connection that's coming from the instrument cluster and this is coming back and is actually connecting to this bolt which is on one of the motor mounts. 
Okay, there is a stranded wire that then goes over to the engine block. The ground cable from the battery comes over to this, and that's how your battery, you know, when you hit your starter, the engine is grounded. You just need to run a battery uh, lead to the starter. From here, they ran a stranded cable over here, and they then have these two black wires that they're going to be connecting here under this bolt. These two black wires are what grounds equipment on your tractor. This ground is also going back to the instrument cluster. One of the problems with instrument clusters is ground. There's a ground problem. I had an X485 that I've been working on, and when I took this uh, bolt out of here, I don't know why I did that, I just thought it would be a good idea, and I looked at these two ring terminals, and they were totally corroded. You can have terminals that physically are tight, and there's no reason that they wouldn't draw current, but this, this corrosion can actually insulate it and cause a problem. I've had cases where I couldn't start a tractor that had been sitting outside for 10 years. When I go to start it, I had to go back and actually take the battery terminal off and clean it. The lug, the nut, everything was tight. It's just a matter of there was corrosion underneath there, and it even might have enough... Uh, power there to light some lights on the dash or something, but when you try to hit the uh, ignition key, it didn't, you know, allow enough current to go through there. So that's something that uh, whenever I got a tractor, if I get a new one, that's going to be on my list of things to do is just take that off and clean it so I make sure I do have a good connection. A lot of testing, you're looking for grounds, and you'd be surprised you know, if you don't have the right ground, you connect to the wrong place, you might have a problem there, not with the actual uh, item you're trying to connect or correct. So, what I've done here is I've added a connection on the black-white wire that is the control lead that's going to the fuel sensor in the fuel tank. Okay, with this I can open up the circuit I don't have to take the fender deck off to get at the connector which is on the top of the fuel tank. By doing this all I need to do is unplug this and once again all I'm going to be doing is connecting ground going to the fuel gauge in the instrument cluster and it will go high if I unplug or don't have a uh, ground connection or a low resistance connection, if it's a high resistance connection, it's going to go toward empty. Okay, I'm now going to measure the resistance on the black white wire that's going to the sensor in the fuel tank. And this is saying that I have 7.8 ohms of resistance. I've already uh, checked the technical manual and the sensor in the tank is going to have a range of around 7 ohms to 200 ohms. 7 would be when it's full, 200 would be when it's empty. So just by doing this my fuel gauge looks like it's about where it should be and I've grounded and you know checked the gauge in the instrument cluster that looks good I've now checked the uh, resistance of the sensor in the tank and that's within range and